now, Margie Reedy, Chet Curtis. This is Newsnight on NECN. You should have an individualized, a, pro a program that's more individualized, not one size fits all. It's a debate about language and literacy, cultural identity, and getting ahead the American way. Tonight, Massachusetts hears the call for radical change in bilingual education. The Supreme Court has American human blood on their hands. Also tonight, marijuana and medical need. The Supreme Court speaks, but will states go their own way? Good evening, I'm Margie Reedy. There is finally an issue the entire U.S. Supreme Court agrees on. I'm Chet Curtis. The issue is the medical use of marijuana. The judges are against it, but the battle isn't over. I'll have more later tonight. But first tonight, the Massachusetts State House today, there were diverse accents and diverse views on the subject of bilingual education. English immersion is the new rallying cry of reformers who say bilingual education has failed. Two years ago, the English immersion forces were big winners in California. And now supporters of bilingual education are digging in for a fight. NECN's Tina Detal has the story. This is Mary Guerrero's third grade class. All the kids come from Spanish-speaking homes. In fact, that is their first language, English. So I'll follow them here. right now. When I write a uh, word like it's not supposed to be, they, they correct it for me, and I read it, and now and I go like, oh, now I understand. Fanatis spoke mostly Spanish when she moved from the Dominican Republic to Lawrence last year. Now she speaks Spanish and English fluently, as does her teacher. They say the, the main idea of the, of the lesson has been taught in English. When they group up, they can use their own native language or any words that they bring to the subject to try to express and, and convey meaning. But then we'll try to bring it back into the English as they work through the stages. Guerrero says the superintendent here in Lawrence is looking to change okay, the bilingual education a little moving towards having separate native language and English concentrated classes as well. It's similar to the proposal suggested by Representative Antonio Cabral. The main objective or the main goal of TVE is to teach English, but utilizing the strength of that student, which is his home language, for him or her to continue their academic development on math, science, social studies, history, so when they move from when they finally transition to mainstream, they are not three to five years behind. Senator Guy Gladys wants to replace bilingual education with one year of English immersion. My bill will address the same issue as California's Proposition 227. And there were a lot of critics of that bill originally. Since that bill has been incorporating California, test scores have gone up 20, 50, and sometimes 100% for bilingual students. But the Massachusetts Commissioner of Education wants to see bilingual education reformed, not abandoned. TVE doesn't fit all kids. Dutch and immersion doesn't fit all kids. So I think this is moving in the right direction, providing choices. Back in Guerrero's classroom, she also sees the benefits of having choices when it comes to helping students learn. Different students respond well to different programs. It's not like it's one size fits all when it comes to bilingual education, just like it is for any type of education. Now this debate over how to teach bilingual students is not a new one. It's been going on for more than a quarter century. Massachusetts bilingual law was passed in 1971, and at that time it was the first in the nation. It also hasn't changed much since then. In Boston, Tina Detell, NECN. And my guests tonight are taking opposing sides on the future of bilingual education. State Representative Mary Roganis favors English immersion to replace bilingual education. And State Representative Antonio Cabral supports a modified form of the current bilingual education system. Thanks to both of you for joining us tonight. Representative Cabral, what's wrong with English immersion? You're talking about you wanting some different sort of systems. We haven't had a change in 30 years. What's wrong with just teaching the children in English, focusing on that? Well, that's going back 30 years. We know we had the immersion 30 years ago. The immersion did not work 30 years ago. We, we know that for a fact. We have the numbers. We have all the studies. We have all the results of an immersion program 30 years ago. That's precisely why we changed and we reformed 30 years ago into a transitional bilingual program uh, method or format. All right, uh, Representative Roganis, is that in fact going back in time then? Well, 30 years ago was the very highest hoped Massachusetts passed the transitional bilingual education law. It's my belief that it has not functioned as it was anticipated to. The failure is there in the faces of the kids. 
who are stuck in a segregated mm. classroom and not being prepared for the future adequately. Well, if, if English immersion was used before, uh, Representative Cabral said, not with very w good effect. Oh, I, How is this going to be different? In, in that day and age, I'm not sure it was without good effect, but no one that I'm aware of is advocating going back to the old days of sink or swim, drop the kid into a classroom. We're talking about a supportive classroom that has a teacher who can provide assistance and support in the native language of the child as needed, but is focusing on getting the child quickly into an English learning setting and into the mainstream of the school. Well, that's what some people say, that the kids are sort of allowed to languish too long and being able to rely upon their native language aren't really, I mean, English is the goal, is it not? English is the goal. It's always been the goal. It will always be the goal of transitional background education. It is the goal of this major reform that we are proposing um, uh, because we believe English is an important acquisition to, to, to reach uh, in order for, for the eventual success of mm -hmm. that student in this country. In simple terms, uh, how would you change the current system? It's very simple. Uh, we have two, the, the bill really, it's the first major overhaul, major comprehensive reform in bilingual education in the state since the original law was put in place in 1972. We would um, uh, do two major things. One, we would do all the, uh, all the changes to reflect the other reform of 93, have bilingual education reflect, reflect around accountability, around standards, around assessment tools to reflect the reform of 93. In addition to that... Okay, well, we don't know what 93, what that was. Well, I mean, the, the curriculum frameworks, the MCAS... Okay, so what you know, all the all other students are dealing with. That's right. Okay. So we're putting in place accountability, not only for the student, but the school system, for DOE, the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. We we'll set up the standards that every student has to meet. These students would have to meet as well. We would create assessment tools for their English proficiency. Okay. Uh, annual testing for the English proficiency. With that sort of testing then and, and that sort of accountability, what's wrong with that system? You're, they're certainly being pushed to the goals that it sounds like you and many other education reformers want. I, I read the bill and the proviso is that in some settings 30 percent of their school day is in their native language. I don't see how they can meet all the goals of a modern <coughs> MCAS requirement and still spend 30 percent of their time outside of the mainstream. But isn't it difficult, I mean, if you're trying to teach a child math or science or something like that, trying to teach them that in addition to having on top of that the, the extra layer of teaching it in a language they're not very familiar with, when doesn't that just slow down the learning? We're talking about the entire K through 12 spectrum. When you have a kindergarten child, I don't think that child needs to be taught 30% of the day in a non-English <coughs> language. What about that? Well, I think, I think that's... Uh, the argument here is English only. That's what they're proposing. We know that doesn't work. What we need to do is really to seriously look how people learn, how people acquire language. In the process, it's important to use the, their strengths. And the strength is their home language, their native language, to continue their education progress or their education development in math and science and history, as you mentioned. Because if we don't do that, then they're going to fall behind three to five years by the time they have enough proficiency in English to perform all those core subjects in English. Mm -hmm. And Mary? we know all this, if I may add, sure. we know uh, all the information that we have available to us that when someone, regardless if it's a bilingual student, or if it's an English native speaker, if they fall behind in school three to five years, they'll never be able to catch up. Don't these kids need a jump start at the beginning? Don't, oh yes, and they will get it with the structured or sheltered immersion that's being tried in schools and it's really being tried in many cases against the existing law. That's one reason that we're trying to change the law to allow diversity in, in the way the education is provided. Tony is really talking about the philosophy that was behind the 1971 law, that the native language strengths have to be enforced first. The results in California have shown that this is not the case with All documented right. test results. Well, you've given me the perfect jumping off point because that's where we're going next. Coming up, we'll hear from a man who helped eliminate bilingual education in California and now wants to do it in Massachusetts. Californian Ron Unz, when Newsnight returns. I work with these students. I have the opportunity to show them how intelligent they are. Not just show others, show them so they don't buy into the sense that they have nothing to offer. 
Yes, they come from another culture. Yes, they speak another language. That only adds to their ability to understand more. It doesn't take away anything away from them. The theory of bilingual education is that children of non-English background would be offered basic subjects in their native language while learning to speak English as they progress through grade levels. Now reformers are attacking both the theory and the practice of bilingual education. They say total English immersion would be a better way to go. Ron Unz led the fight for English immersion in California. Then he went national with the cause. Ron Unz joins us by phone now from Palo Alto, California. Good evening to you, sir. Great to be here. Good.